to do is to be able to do combustion reactions and recognize combustion reactions. So what do you see in this reaction that makes the combustion reaction? Oxygen. Is oxygen. So oxygen is being used. And the products? Uh, water. Water carbon and carbon dioxide. And heat, okay, energy. This is heat. Of course, they put food up there, and I didn't eat dinner. Great. So, yeah, so uh, a lot of times you'll see people cooking like this. They'll throw alcohol on it, and they'll light it on fire, and that helps to sort of give it a nice little finish on the end, a little crust on the flavor. But anyways, uh, alcohols burn. Now, this is ethyl alcohol, so that's actually what they would be throwing on your food when they light it, okay, uh, in the form of some liqueur of some sort that has a lot of sugar and flavor or whatever it has. But it doesn't have to be ethyl alcohol. It could be any alcohol. So it could be, let's say, our friend isopropyl alcohol. The combustion reaction would look exactly the same. Now, it balances differently, okay? But the combustion reaction is written exactly the same way. It's plus oxygen. The triangle... What is the triangle? You guys know? Remember? It means you heat it. Yeah, you have to light it on fire. It takes a little bit to get it going. Because that's why, like, when you open a bottle of alcohol, it doesn't burst into flame on you. It takes some energy to get the process started, so you have to heat it, give it some heat. The products will still be CO2 and water. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'll make a blank slide, and we will go ahead and write this out, and we'll just balance it. Because I know it's been a while since you've done that. So I have CH3, I'll rewrite it so it's neater. Oops, well I started way on the left. Hang on. All right, I put it way on the, on the sorry, I had it way on the right, so put oxygen. makes CO2 plus water. You guys remember what you do when you balance? All right. I have three carbons on the left. I need three carbons on the right. When all hydrocarbon reactions start with carbon, then do hydrogen, and then do oxygen. Okay, So that's the order you do them in. So if it helps you remember, it's Cho, like my friend John Cho over in... Anyways, he teaches over on the other side of campus. Asian studies program. But anyway, CHO, so that's the order we're going to do it in. So I have three carbons on the left. So if you want to, you can put carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And so here I have three on the left. So I need three on the right. Okay, so I'm going to put a three in front of this carbon so that I have three. Now, hydrogens. How many hydrogens do I have on the left? Eight. Very good. You guys are fast. Eight. I need to have eight on the right, so I'm going to need a four over here. Okay? So that gives me my eight. Now what we have to do is we have to look at the oxygen situation. And the way I like to do oxygens, in the ethyl alcohol, I have one. and the oxygen, I have two. And on the right-hand side, you have to calculate the oxygen since I multiplied them by three and four. So how many do I have? Ten. So the reason I do this is I can look at that and say, well, there's the one. That's from the isopropyl alcohol. That's from that. I have to figure out how to get nine more, right? Can I get nine more? What's that? Like, let's say I, it, O2 comes as twos, right? Or is it seven halves? Nine halves? How many hydrogens do I need? I need ten. Oh, I need eight, sorry. I want, oh, no, ox sorry, I'm doing oxygens. My bad. So 
I have 10 on the right, right? If I take one and I need nine more, right? That would do it, so I need nine halves. Because the coming is O2s, right? So that's what you're doing. So this becomes a nine halves, and can you stop there? No, you gotta multiply everything by two to get rid of the subscripts, okay? So you're gonna have two um, isopropyl alcohols, You'll have nine oxygens, and that makes uh, six CO2s and eight H2Os. And the way I showed you how to do this was actually like the fastest way. Like the way you're always taught is you count everything left and right, and then you try to, but because you know you have to go in the order of C, H, and O, just start with C, balance the Cs, do the H's, balance the H's, and then figure out from the O's how many O's you have left to balance, and you're done, okay? Okay, so combustion reaction is a very common reaction for alcohols. Another really common reaction for alcohols is known as a dehydration react reaction. Dehydration reactions, at least many of them, not all of them, involve hydrogen, as an acid, okay, so this is acid. Now, how do you recognize the formula of the acids? You guys remember this from Gen Chem 3A? It has an H on the front, yeah. <laughs> so HCl, HBr, HI, H2SO4, H3PO4. It's, if it starts with H, it's an acid, okay. The acids that are typically used for this, they didn't tell you, are typically sulfuric acid and phosphoric acid, and it's a mixture of the two. And then you heat it, and what do you get out of it? You get an alkene, all right? So product and dehydration reaction is always an alkene, and what is that water. thing? Water. So that's why it's called a dehydration reaction, because you're removing water from the reaction, okay? So if you look at the way they've done this, there's the H and the OH, right? And that's what makes that. And in the place of where the H and the OH are is where you get the double bond, okay? So these guys, when they're pulled away, leave you with the double bond when they leave. Okay, so let me show you something here, okay? I'm going to do another one, and then I'll talk a little bit about um, more details about the reaction. But an alcohol dehydration leads to an alkene in water, okay? Okay, so I'm going to pick a different alcohol. And this is 2-butanol. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to analyze this to figure out what the product is, okay? So first thing that you have to do is you have to identify the hydrogens that are next to the alcohol functional group. And you'll notice the way I've set this one up, the OH is between, on a carbon that's actually between two carbons. And these two carbons aren't the same. This one has three hydrogens on it, and this one has two. So when I take the alcohol functional group away in a dehydration reaction, when I take this away, I also have to take away a hydrogen. Remember, that's what makes the double bond. And it could come from either this side or it could come from that side. So to draw this, I think it's just easiest to draw it, like to read, just to analyze it initially. You would say, well, I have a CH2 and an H, and I have a CH and an OH, and then I have a CH and an H, and I have a CH3. 
cubes. And I'm going to end up either taking the one on the right, that's this one, or the one on the left. And if I take this, these two, the double bond will be here, right? But if I take these two, the double bond will be here. And those double bonds are in different positions. OK, so it turns out that the hydrogen always comes off the hydrogen, off the carbon that has the fewest hydrogens. And this is known as Markovnikov's rule, because of a guy named Markovnikov. And then I'll write the whole reaction out. So Markovnikov. And I have the name written on the next slide, but it's just too long. I don't want to write it here. Um, your book spells it a little bit differently than I do, but that's because it comes from Russian, and it gets translated differently. So I gave you the both spellings on the other slide so that you can look it up if you need to. But, so Markovnikov said that the carbon with the fewest hydrogens is where the hydrogen comes off of. Okay? And so if you look here on the drawing, there's two hydrogens here, and there's one hydrogen here besides the one that you would take off. And so this is the side that the double bond is formed on. So when you form a double bond following Markovnikov's rule, you would remove these two. And the double bond would be in the middle of the molecule. Okay. Would the H under the CH2 stay in the bottom, or would we put it back? Oh, you could put it back, yeah. This is just for the analysis yeah. of like figuring out which ones are lost. Um, so whichever one of those hydrogens gets lost, determines where the double bond is. And you always take the hydrogens where the carbon has the fewest hydrogens. Okay. And that's where the double bond is? Yeah, and that's where the double bond is. The other way to say it, and I'll just, uh, let me just draw. So let me let me go to another, do you want, can I go to another slide? Are you okay? I'm going to go to another slide. And again, I'm recording all this, so this will be up tonight. So if you miss something, you can just go on and grab it. So... <clears throat> I'm going to hopefully get you guys used to looking at um, different structures, uh, drawing types anyways. Ay, ay, ay. I can't draw. Okay, there we go. So what ends up happening is H plus and heat, and you end up with that plus water. So Markovnikov pointed out that it was this one and this one. The other way to look at it, though, is to say to yourself, well, the double bond that forms has the most carbons attached to it. So if you look at a bond line, Let me write this out. Markovnikov said H from the side with fewest H's Another way to look at it is double bond with the most carbons attached. And sometimes, like when you have bond line and you can't, act, you know, you have to draw the hydrogens in, you have to like guess where they're at, kind of fill it in. If you have a bond line, it's easier to use that second rule. Because you just look to see where the double bond is going to have more carbons attached to it. Okay, So I'll give you some examples of that just very quickly. I'm just going to draw one on the bottom. So you notice, like, if I take that OH, again, this is the same structure. If I take that OH and the hydrogen at the end, so if I take this hydrogen, I would have ended up with like that. Okay, 
the actual product has the double bond in the middle. Now, how many carbons are attached to that double bond? Two. One and two, right? How many attached to this double bond? One. Just the one. That is directly attached to the double bond. So you can just look at the number of double bonds that form, and you can tell from a bond line, like, which one to pick off, okay? Oh, sorry. I called it Markovnikov. It's Zaitsev's rule. My bad. So I kind of rewrote what they put in, on the slide. OH is removed, and also the, the and I didn't apparently edit very well, H from the carbon with the fewest hydrogens, and then the double bond is put in their place. The major product is a double bond with the most carbon groups attached. Okay. So you have to decide which hydrogen, which side the hydrogen will be removed from. So if you look at this one, right, which one does it come off of? The left side here. Right? And so when you draw the structure that comes from this one, without drawing the whole reaction out, you can draw C A oops. You can draw CH3, CH2, CH double bond, C uh, H, and then CH3. And that's let, lets me take it away from the side with the fewest hydrogens, right? And you notice how the hydrogen here has one, this one still has three, right? So there's a saying, the poor get poorer. That's one of the ways you can tell. It's the side with the least amount of hydrogens at the end has even fewer hydrogens, okay? What about this one on the right? Which side do I take it off of? I'll take it on the right because there's only one hydrogen attached there, okay? which means the double bond will be attached here between these two, and I'll remove this hydrogen and this OH group. So the part that goes away will be this hydrogen and this OH, and in their place I'll put a double bond. Okay. So that part of the molecule would look like this. I'll just draw the whole thing out and try to jam it in here. and then C, and then I have to draw it like this because I ran out of room, CH3, and CH3, like that. Okay. And again, if you just, you know, there's two ways to look at the rule. One is the hydrogen rule, one is the carbon rule. And this double bond has a carbon here, here and here it actually has three carbons attached to it. If you had taken it from this side, there would be a carbon here and a carbon here. Okay. You guys know about flashcards for memorizing? That's all this is. Make a flashcard, right? One side you're going to draw the reactant, other side you draw the product. And write dehydration reaction. You'll have another card to say dehydration reaction and then just what the reagents are acid and you heat it, okay? Okay, um, let's see. Oh, this is one we already did. This was actually on the previous slide. I'm going to skip over that one. Let's do these ones. This next one at the bottom. Okay, so this one at the top is the one that I just did. I just drew it the other way. So let's decide what the product for this one will be. Okay. I'm going to do a dehydration reaction. So it's uh, the 2-methyl cyclopentanol that we drew earlier. And we're going to add H plus and heat to it. So that tells me it's dehydration, right? So when you see this, like this means dehydration. Is it going to be the double bond going to be on the top side or the bottom side? Now, if you're not sure, draw them both and then just eliminate one just based on what you see. Okay? So, for example, if you're not sure, you draw like 
this one came off, right? So you would have a double bond here, or you would have the double bond here. The first one's it. Why is the first one it? Yeah, the, the OH and the CH3. I kind of knew what you meant, but I wanted you to fix it. It's between the OH and the other CH3. And so if you count, it has one, two, three carbons attached to it. And this one only has two. So this is the better product. Okay? Now, it turns out in reality, both get formed, right? But the percentage of this one will be much higher than the percentage of this other one. In organic chemistry, we have this term called major and minor. One of them will be the major product. That's the one that I drew first. That's the one you'll have more of, and then you'll have the minor product, which is the one on the right. Okay. Major and minor? No, I'm going to ask you for, like, the best product. It might say which is the major, but you just have to pick out the best product. so you know the terms. Oh, and of course you can't read them down there. <sighs> okay, now we've got to learn a little bit about oxidation and reduction. Um, I'm not sure you can see that very well. Um, there's a couple of ways. Uh, we, we talk about oxidation, right? Like when your skin gets old and, and not very plastic anymore. Sorry. They talk about your skin getting oxidized from the sun and the oxygen that it's always in contact with, and free radicals and all that kind of stuff. Well, oxidation is actually a chemical process. Here's an alcohol. This is actually ethyl alcohol. When you oxidize it, you increase the number of bonds to oxygen. Okay. Uh, did you guys learn about aldehydes and ketones? Learn all those functional groups. Well, this is an aldehyde. Okay? An aldehyde is a carbon that's double bonded to an oxygen, but only a carbon on one side. So aldehydes look like, in general, oops, in general, look like this in bond line. Okay? Or in the sort of condensed Lewis structure, look like. So that's an aldehyde. If you take a primary alcohol, oh, did you learn about primary, secondary? Probably a little bit. I'll go over it again. But if you take a primary alcohol, that is an, al uh, an alcohol with the OH group attached right, to a carbon with only one carbon on it. So that's why it's primary. There's one carbon attached to this carbon. Secondary would be, this is a secondary, two carbons attached to that carbon. Take a primary alcohol and you oxidize it, you'll get an aldehyde. If you oxidize it again, you get a carboxylic acid. And you'll notice what happens in the oxidation process, you end up getting more bonds to oxygen. So there's three bonds to oxygen, two bonds to oxygen, and then one bond to oxygen. So oxidation is going to the right, and reduction is going to the left. And generally speaking, for classes like this one, we're, we're not that concerned about the chemistry, just the concepts of what's going on when they say, you know, that molecule gets oxidized during the metabolism, or they talk about a, a, a drug that gets metabolized through oxidation. This is the kind of stuff that they're talking about, okay? They'll just say when something's oxidized, we'll just do that. Now in the laboratory, we have a ton of stuff that'll do that. But like in the atmosphere, we have oxygen. Right? It helps do that. So we'll say oxidation goes that way, and reduction goes the other way. So those are reduction going to the left, oxidation going to the right. If you take, again, primary gives you an aldehyde, secondary gives you a ketone, but can't, it can't be oxidized any further, so it doesn't go to a carboxylic acid. And then tertiary alcohols, what do you think a tertiary is? Three carbons. three carbons attached to the carbon, right? Tertiary carbons don't react. So tertiary, well, don't 
can't be oxidized. So tertiary alcohols are not easily oxidized or not oxidized. Uh, just show you this other thing, though. Uh, you guys, um, in your biology biology classes, learn about like NADH and A, NAD. They talk about oxidation and reduction, and the reduction is when you add hydrogens, right? So if you look at this in terms of the biology reduction, if I was reducing this, I'd be adding hydrogens to it. And there's two hydrogens on it. Okay, so it follows, like, if you know the biology, you learn that stuff in your biology class, so they talk about oxidation reduction, NADH and NADPH and all those things. It's the same process. And sometimes those chemicals that we use, like, in our bodies to do these processes can also be used in the lab to do exactly the same thing. Right? Okay. I'm going to skip some of these slides. Skip some of these slides. I just did it all on that one slide, sorry. I should have should have tried a little harder to remember. Okay. Uh, just a little side note. So uh, you guys know what that you're not supposed to drink methanol. People drink it anyways, but you're not supposed to drink methanol. Methanol turns out when you drink it in your liver, your liver does this, right? Is converting methanol into formaldehyde. You can imagine, what do we use formaldehyde for? Like pickling yeah. organs so that we could study them for years. That's what it does to like your body. It also will happen in your eyes. And so as it converts into formaldehyde in your eyes, that's one of the reasons why people, when they drink methyl alcohol, go blind. Okay. Um, it can also get further oxidized to formic acid. This is the form that your body usually gets rid of it. Okay. What's that? Bless you. Sorry. I didn't hear it. So bless you, uh, even though I didn't hear it. So uh, that's the way it should be anyways. Now, thiols, interestingly enough, when they get oxidized, right, if reduction is adding hydrogens, thiols, that's the SH functional group, lose hydrogens when they're oxidized. When they're reduced, you put the hydrogens back. So this where you see thiol oxidation most commonly, like in biology, is the formation of the disulfide bridge. So you learn about proteins and you learn about primary structures in, in biology. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Biology. Had biology? Talked about proteins? And you have sulfurs, right? And the sulfurs in your hair form these what are called disulfide bridges. And like if you have really kinky hair, it's because the way the bridge is formed when the hair is curled up. And if you want to straighten your hair out, what do you do? You add a straightener to it. But what the straightener does, <laughs> like, well, like chemically straighten. Um, African-American people used to do this back in like the 20s. They would put lye in their hair. And what the lye does is it breaks the disulfide bridges so that the proteins of the hair can straighten out. No, the relaxers, I'm not sure how the relaxers actually work because that's not breaking bonds because your hair gets curly like the next day, right? No. No? It keeps it straight. You have to grow it out. Oh, yeah. So it must be what the relaxers do. I, you can tell I don't do much with my hair. So. <laughs> I have a daughter and I have five sons. And then, of course, I have my wife. And I just say, well, get whatever you need to get. I have no idea what it is. No. All right. So, again... When a disulfide bridge forms in the oxidation process, what ends up happening is these two get removed, right? And then you form this bridge in between. And to break it, you do the reverse. You do the reduction process, and then you end up with thiols again, okay? All right. Uh, I just left that in there, whatever. Okay, now, <laughs> got to take a breathalyzer test. Um, actually, uh, ethanol is hard on your liver, too, because what ends up happening uh, for ethanol, uh, 
in your liver, the ethyl alcohol is formed into this aldehyde, and then from this aldehyde actually can get converted into acetic acid, and the acetic acid that's in your liver can help to pickle your liver. So that's why people have those problems with their uh, liver, okay? So, and that's what it says down here. Those intermediates that you get, those carboxylic acid intermediates are hard on your liver. They also think that's why it gives you a headache. The aldehydes will give you headaches if you, like, inhale them, and so... When you're in your body, you have this uh, ethanol and it converts it to ethanol, that aldehyde is what maybe is causing that headache. Yeah, I'll skip that. All right, so let's do the uh, oxidation of this molecule. Okay, so this is not dehydration. And the only way you know that is you've memorized this H plus versus O, okay? So you have an O here, so this is the oxidation. And the secondary alcohol does what? It loses an H from here and here and places it with a double bond. Okay. So it's like test prep. So those two will go away in an oxidation reaction and form a double bond. So which one of those products is the right one? Kind of a trick, like this down here, CO2 and water, is like the complete oxidation. That's the combustion reaction, though. So this is the product. This first one is the product of dehydration. The second C is combustion. And D is nothing. Right, you know it's the same molecule. At least it looks like the same one to me. Let's do another one. Okay, so now what I'm showing is two oxidations. Okay. Again, this A, what kind of reaction is this that does this? Dehydration. B is combustion. This is oxidation, right? Because you'll notice, just to show you on the, on the thing here, I have an O here and I have an H here, right? So I'll get rid of one of those and I'll get rid of that and I'll form a double bond. But that's just one oxidation. So the first oxidation process actually gives you the aldehyde, which is going to be CH3CH2. C double bond H. And I'm drawing this because that's the first. That's what you get here. And then the next oxidation, you're going to get rid of that and replace it with an OH. Okay. So the products, the two like reasonable choices are actually C and D, but C is just the product of the first oxidation, and this is the product of the second. So the answer is D. Um, yeah. Why is the first step um, showing the H? Oh, I just, I only canceled one of them. So I let, I was trying to cancel out this two there right now and got rid of one of them. So the leftover H on that one, this H2 one? Yeah, the CH is this, over? yeah, is this over here. So this is the guy that's left mm -hmm. after I get rid of one of them. And then I get a double bond to the oxygen, that's a double bond to the oxygen. I hate to tell you this. This is the last slide. Okay. So this is just like a summary slide, okay? Um, just for the, It's actually the summary slide for the entire chapter. So carbon, sulfur, and you know most of it now already. I haven't done ethers, but we'll, we'll do that in class next time. Carbon, sulfur, we call those thiols. We learned how to name them, right? You just name it, and then you add thiol to the end. It's not really hard. And if you go under oxidation, that's when you get disulfides. And then if you have disulfides and you do reduction, so this is oxidation goes this way, right? Oops, sorry. Oxidation going this way. You get disulfides and reduction going that way. 
you end up getting back to thiols from disulfides. Now, for alcohols, right, carbon, oxygen, single bonds, we have alcohols, phenols, that's what we covered in ethers. You notice we didn't do any reactions of ethers. Ethers are not very reactive. So we just left them off. And the only reason you need to know ethers at all, anesthesia. That's one of the things they use as an anesthetic. A lot of the modern anesthesias are, are ethers, and I'll show you some of those in the next lecture, okay? Now, alcohols can undergo dehydration, and you can make alkenes, or they can undergo oxidation, and alcohols and oxidation depends on what you have when you start. You have a primary, you get an aldehyde, you get a secondary, you get a ketone, you have a tertiary, not there, no reaction, yeah, not reactive. And if you, aldehydes can be oxidized one more time to carboxylic acids. All these, all these processes can be reversed. So just like I did this way, if this is an oxidation going down from thiol to disulfide, I can do a reduction backward to an alcohol as well, okay? You don't need to know the reagents. There's like a million reagents for every transformation that you could use. Like I said, you're not going to be, nobody's, are you really a chemistry major? It's your minor? Yeah. But you're not going to be an organic chemist. Probably not. You never know? Well, hey, if you get excited, I teach the more advanced organic chemistry, you're welcome to come to that class, too. But, yeah, if you're not going to be an organic chemist, you don't need to know the whole list of reagents. So, okay. so we're just going to say O and R. Do you have a good voice for YouTube videos? Oh, thanks. <laughs> you know, I've had people tell me that. I'll be talking to people like at random... Like, I was on a, uh, on a panel at Fresno State. I'm on their graduate advisory panel, and I'm also on their undergraduate advisory stuff. And this guy came in from a different university and goes, are you on the radio? And I'm like, no. I'm from Reedley. <laughs> like, oh. All right, anyways, thank you. So that's really all I have for today. Um, hopefully it'll plan out. On uh, Wednesday, I'll try to finish up the lecture and then Wednesday night you're not going to be there but feel free to stick around and do problems the test is on next Wednesday, not this Wednesday next Wednesday and there is no Monday right, Monday is a holiday, just realize that so if you want to study for the test come on Wednesday, I'll try to have some practice questions and things for us to do